Well, today is an exciting day because we have someone who's going to be talking to us about how we should be taking care of ourselves and giving us tips about how to do that. I'm really happy to have with us today, Leslie Urbis. Leslie, welcome. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, we're going to talk about things that, frankly, a lot of women attorneys push to the side um, when they're trying to deal with their busy lives professionally and, and personally, uh, but they tend to forget about their own self-care. So Leslie's got some great information for us. And so I'm going to just turn it over to her and say, Leslie, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? No, of course. So I'm Leslie, as you stated, I'm a dietitian and a personal trainer, and I help committed individuals to remove emotional eating tethers, which really means, you know, do I have social eating, binge eating, bored eating kind of things going on, uh, reduce disease inducing patterns. So in particular, what are you doing to increase that chance? and to remove excessive weight. So, you know, a couple of pounds here or there, or 20, 30, 40 pounds, whatever it may be, reduce that to help you live long guilt and shame-free years. I like to say with the margarita in hand, happy as can be in command of your life instead of letting all of these other health problems rule you. That's, that's fabulous. So, so let me just focus immediately on a couple of things that you said. Um, the first uh, was committed individuals. So tell me what you mean by that when you say committed. Of course. Yeah. So, so you have some powerhouse, you know, women lawyers that listen to you here and the thought process is you're committed. You're committed to your job. You're committed to that. But everyone every year, and you know, especially this year, we're in February, right? So we don't have to worry about it in terms of, you know, you made the commitment on January 1st to lose weight or make the health change, right? Everybody puts it in. Not everybody, let's say majority, right? Put it in that I'm going to do this for my health. But it's like a bullet point. I put it on a piece of paper and I think it's going to happen. Committed individual means you made it something that you're actually going to pursue. And it's not just that, oh yeah, when I get to it kind of thing. Got it, got it. So you mentioned um, at least what, what I would call stress eating. And I would love to explore that a little bit because law is a very high stress job, lots of demands. Um, and I know that I've been a victim of, of what I call stress eating too. So can we talk about that for a little bit? You know, what are some of the patterns that you see and then some ways that you can deal with it? Yeah, of course. So, so the biggest things I think I see with stress eating is that there's some sort of connection there. The food, the food that you're going to, when you stress eat is typically consistent Maybe not the same type, but like, oh, if I'm under stress, I go to salt, or if I'm under stress, I go mm. to sweet, or if I'm under stress, I literally go to fast food restaurants more often, or I have my assistant go get it for me because it's easier that way, right? So stress is an emotion that we have, right? Stress is a trigger from a fear that we have of some sort, or, you know, just a lot going on, right? A fear of maybe like, if I don't get this done right now, like I'll botch this case or I'll lose this client or something like that, right? So we put ourselves under this extreme stress and our brain has to have a release. We used to, when put under stress, you know, back in the, you know, caveman days, it was like fight or flight. Are you running? Are you fighting? Or are you just going to pause, right? Because freeze was also a solution, right? Now we don't have that. You know, the stress that we're under isn't like a lion is coming into our office trying to attack us. But there is a lion almost in our head. So the way that we've moved through life is now that we're attached to this stress in a different way, we use our release in a different way. And food is a really easy way to do that because we have emotional connections to food from when we were a kid, from when the way we saw our parents handle food, from coworkers, from being in college, 
all of those things and all those people kind of, you know, took off on you. Maybe you grew up in a house that, you know, sweets weren't a thing and you really ate healthy, but then you got into college and all the people that you went through school, you started to notice that they were like stress eating and it, it seemed to, you know, help them. So you adopted that habit. So now it's like a subconscious programming. It's almost like stress mm -hmm. eat. So the ways that I really help people get over this is one, understanding that sometimes that stress eating is literally out of your control because it's a subconscious behavior. You're not consciously thinking, I am stressed, I must eat. Mm -hmm. So ways to really combat that is one, as I like to say, it's like the lock and key mechanism. What is, the, what is the thing that you're doing when you stress eat? Is it that I have a drawer, I open, and so now I'm just gonna snack on these foods? Or is it that I call up the you know, local uh, you know, delivery service and have it delivered? Is it that I purposely bring in donuts every morning to help those people in my office and then I'm the one that eats them all? And so you put something in place to jog your thought process, to bring you back into your conscious mind. So easiest way is like with the refrigerator, putting a post-it note on the handle. So you literally have to move the post-it note or grab it, not to the side, because then it becomes just something there. It's like a photo. You can glance over it. It becomes a, a normal thing. Putting it on the handle, making it something you literally have to break or take off jogs the mind. You've changed the thought process there. So that's the first thing. The second thing would be, let's say it's a drawer next to you. We need to move that. Okay. It needs to be something where now you have to get up to get there. So there's the conscious thought of breaking what you're doing. And most people, if they're really working hard, won't take the conscious thought to get up. They'll have it. Oh, I'm hungry. I need to stress eat. But getting up would break them from what they're currently doing. So they don't, they may have the thought, but they don't release it. And then for things like calling the delivery service, mm -hmm. having a note, like when you open your phone, having the background be something like, do you really need it? Or some people having to have like an additional code to call a number or putting it in. Like if you do a lot of online ordering, mm -hmm. having a code there, there's a couple of tips and tricks there that you can just kind of utilize. So that way it's like, okay, I have, I have a conscious breaker to stop me from the stress eating habit. That's great. Those are fabulous ideas. And I, I love what you mentioned about the idea of, mm, I like donuts, so I want to eat, but you know, uh, gee, I shouldn't eat donuts, but now I'm going to take it in for everybody if you're in a physical office, because, you know, everybody will like this. And then it's, it's almost like, and it's okay for me to eat it because, gee, it's there and I'll just have one and then I'll have, and then you have two and then, you know, it, it just goes from there. That's, that's just interesting. I mean, I'll be honest, I know in the past, um, there were times when I did that exact same thing. Like, yeah, I'll bring X in because I want to eat a little bit, but I feel guilty if I do, but if I give it to everybody else, then, then maybe it's okay. Uh, so those are some, those are some great tips. I love the idea too of having to physically move the post-it note because it seems like that then does give your brain time to say, what are you doing? What, you know, what do you really, is this really what you want to be doing? Um, so I love that. Those are some great tips. So tell me about, um, I want to ask you about uh, also fitness issues because I know you both work with nutrition, right? And then fitness. Uh, because again, busy women, um, you know, running their own business, uh, busy frequently with family issues, some with children issues, you know, whatever their personal situation might be. And like most business owners, busy is a way of life. So uh, I, I talk to a lot of women lawyers who say, yeah, I would love to have a, a, a routine. I would love to have a fitness routine, but I can't figure out how to fit that into my day. So what would you say to somebody who comes to you with that kind of an issue? Yeah, of course. So, so that's one of the basics that I start with anybody that says they're busy is 
allowing them to figure out where that time is because there is time. It's just figuring it out. You know, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. I completely get why you're saying you're busy, but I promise you there's something there. Um, and that's, that's my love is finding that for you. But when you have that thought process, my thing that I come back to is there's three reasons why you're not committing to it. The first thing is you're not committing to it because one, it either doesn't make you progress forward in your career or two, it's not something that you think about is a long-term need of love kind of thing. So what I mean by that is your, your husband or your significant other gets attention because you love them. Okay. At one point in time, that person in your life, um, wouldn't have been like, Oh, I'm sorry. I have to wash my hair. Right. You would keep that date with them. Now, when you, when it comes to fitness, it's like, oh, whatever, I break it. So you make a promise to yourself that you've broken so many times mm -hmm. that you don't follow through anymore. Your brain says, oh, it's okay. It's a promise. I don't have to keep right. So to get on a good fitness routine, there's, there's three qualities that it has to have one, you have to love it. So the fitness that you want to do needs to be geared towards something that you love just as much as you love what you do, love the people in your life, love your kids, love your husband. There has to be that attachment. That could be something like I need to do a local pole dancing class or something, or I need to, you know, um, do a, an aqua class or something, find the love of what it is. And, you know, we work together to do that, but finding that love in there, that's number one. The second thing is understanding that you have to make it a bond with yourself, set it as a date. This is me dating myself, me giving back to my body. Because if you look at it from that perspective, you wouldn't break the date with your husband. You wouldn't tell your three-year-old kid, I'm sorry, I have to wash my hair. Mommy can't play with you. You know, you would literally do it. But we come up with those excuses. It's like, oh, okay, well, I'm a little bit tired right now, so I'm not going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So set it as a date that you don't want to break because you're in love with yourself as much as you love your work, you love your kids, you love your significant other. And then the third biggest thing to something like that with fitness routine is don't set the goal higher than you can go at first. Everybody's like, okay, well, I know I need to do it five days a week or I need to get three hours. What if you just got 15 minutes a couple of days a week to start? And then that helped to boost you to get to the next thing. You know, we all have to take it in stride instead of now I've lost three hours in a week and I've set myself up with so much stress that next week I'm just not going to follow through mm -hmm. because that's an unobtainable goal that I have. And, and what, I know one of the things that I experienced um, uh, because I do make this, you know, it's sort of, I call it like come hell or high water first thing in the morning, every morning I'm doing X. Because the other thing that I found was when I didn't do it, then, and I got out of the routine, I had so much less energy. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that's true for most people. You don't realize how your fitness routine energizes you. Am I right on that? Completely. Yeah. In my top three things to do to boost your energy, the, the third one is to move. So yeah. movement actually provides energy. People think the exercise will make me tired. Technically, yes, but typically not until you go to bed. It just helps you sleep better. It doesn't actually, you know, do 20 push-ups and tell me you immediately want to go to bed. No, you, you feel your blood pumping. Your blood is not like go to bed. It's like, wow, that felt good. Right. So I agree with you on that, that the, the movement actually does help and allows you to be energized. It also increases blood flow, which then allows you to think clearer to accomplish more work in less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it's, again, for me, I've noticed that it really does help with the focus factor too throughout the day. I, I just seem to have more energy and a better ability to stay on the task I need to stay on. And then you mentioned sleep. And, and I, absolutely, that's been my experience. If for some reason I have to miss my, my workout, then I don't sleep as well that night. And you're right, I'm not, I don't notice the effect of the exercise really until it's time to go to bed and then boom, I'm asleep because I'm tired. But it, it relates back to what I did earlier in the day. Exactly. Yeah. And I think sometimes, like, as you said, people 
get concerned, like, well, if I do that and I work out first thing in the morning, say, um, I'm just going to be, you know, exhausted and I can't get my work done. And, and, but as you are telling us, it really works the other way around, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, now tell me, how did you, I know you work with different types, groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. So, so tell us a little bit about who you work with. And, and I know one of those groups is executives and what kinds of, of work you do with executives like business owners. Yeah, of course. So, you know, the ideal person that I, I work with is an entrepreneur or is a business owner or is a, you know, CEO or a high up executive because you're, you have the, you have everything in your, your toolbox, in your mind to push through and every goal that you have work-wise, even life-wise, but this, this wellness, wellness doesn't seem to be something that's there. And it's almost because it's a value that we were either raised with or not raised with. Right. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in my thirties and it wasn't a big thing for my parents to push wellness as I got older, it's now become a thing, right? Wellness is almost a value. Other countries value their health extremely, but in, here, you know, sometimes in the States, we don't put as much value there. It's like, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'll get to it when I have time. So one of the biggest things that, you know, I see is that the client, my best client is somebody that's like, I don't want to do another diet. I don't want to have another, I've done keto, I've done Weight Watchers, I've done whatever it may be. I want a solution. Out there, that person is looking for something like, I know I'm busy and I need to eat fast food two times a week. I know my kids like pizza on Friday. I know that I have wine typically a couple times a night. I know during business meetings and travel meetings and things that I'm doing, I'm inflicted to dine out more. And these diets that I'm taught, I don't know how to put them into place in these situations. So instead, that person wants something created for them. They want an individualized approach that allows them, one, to know in those situations what's best to eat, but two, to be able to know there is no off day. It's not like, oh, it's okay, I'll just start again on Monday. Like, I'll do something like that because that sets you up for failure, right? You don't start work on Monday, mess up something partway through the day and say, oh, it's okay, I'll go back to work on Monday, right? We do that with diets. So that's ideally who I love to work with is that person that understands like, I need a catered to approach because my life is not, you know, the same thing every day because I don't have an A game day every day where everything flows well. Some days I have a, you know, B game day or a C game day or an F game day, or what do I do when I'm on vacation? Right. So I teach that person how to go through each day, eating as best as they can for that situation and not have the off day. So they get the results. I, I do it through a combination of what I call mindset dieting, which is really changing some of your inner behaviors to get the outer results. It's not, you know, people, when they hear diet, they're like, okay, now I got to count my calories or now I got to restrict this. Right. So a diet has such a bad connotation to it that immediately when you hear it, even if you've tried something before, your brain literally goes, we're not doing that. You know, um, so that's who I love to help are, are people that, you know, have realized like I, I, I health is a value to me. I know I need to keep my health, but I don't want that band-aid solution of let me follow this plan, get a result. And then a year later have the story of, man, I looked good a year ago. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love the point you make about, you know, I, I, the, the diet may say, you know, in the book, eat X, Y, and Z, but I know my kids want pizza on Friday. And I know that, you know, I've got business travel uh, or in-person events, um, you know, whether they're business events or, or personal events or, you know, a lot of networking events and all of that kind of stuff. You don't have the control over what's going to be put in front of you, what's going to be available. So, it, it, it does make trying to follow a specific diet plan that says, you know, yes and to this and no to all of this. It, it makes it very difficult to follow that in a normal life of somebody who is in business. It's just very, very difficult. And uh, so 
the plans that you describe and the way you handle it very much catered to each individual situation does seem to be the way to set somebody up for success. Um, and uh, without, you know, all the guilt of, oh, I'm on the keto or the whatever diet. And yeah, and uh, I blew it. I totally blew it. And then you have the thought of, well, if I blew it early enough in the day, let me just go crazy for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. Whereas if you can avoid that, like through a customized solution um, or learn how to handle when you make mistakes, because we all do. I mean, you know, nobody's perfect in their gosh knows and their nutrition. Uh, you know, how do you handle when you make mistakes so that you just don't throw up your hands and give up? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, these are just really, really great tips. And uh, I, uh, uh, I know it's going to be helpful to everybody who's listening. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I've noticed um, for uh, women lawyers, because that's who I deal with the most, and I, I know it's, it's true for other groups of people too, but, but there's in the back of your mind, there's sometimes this idea that, you know, I'm smart, I, I, I'm running my own business, I got a lot to do. I should be able to do this without asking for help. Um, how do you break down, because I'm sure you've seen that with some of the people you've worked with too. How, how, how can we sort of break down that barrier that we set up for ourselves to try to understand better, you know, it's okay to go out and seek help when you need it? Yeah, so, so one of the best ways that I was taught is that when you say like, I should be able to do this on my own, that I don't need the help. What you're saying to yourself is that you're not worth it, that you're not worth the additional help, that like, that's not worth the money or that you should be able to do this on your own or that um, somebody will judge you because you've got help here. You should just know how to eat healthy, right? It's sort of like, I mean, cause you, you deal with mostly women. It's sort of like when you have a baby, you're supposed to know what to do with the baby. None of us know what to do with the baby. Well, like, I mean, I don't know about anybody else out there that had a baby, but the day that I was bringing her home, I was like, I can't believe they let me out of the hospital. <laughs> like, do I know what I'm doing? Like, okay, I know I'm supposed to breastfeed her every few hours and like change the diaper, but I don't know cries yet. Beyond that, yeah, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not like, I cannot believe that this baby and I are together and they trust me, right? They just <laughs> trust me. Just because I had her doesn't mean anything, right? So there the thought process is, is that that's how we, it could even be in terms of how we were raised. Like you don't get somebody to clean the house. You clean your house. You don't get somebody to help you with the kids. You take care of your kids. You don't get somebody to help you with your nutrition. You should just know how to eat. I, that's the number one thing I hear from people. I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. And my answer to that is, okay. And if that were true, that you knew what to do and you're just not doing that, what kind of results have you gotten for yourself? And most of them are like, wow, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I've got a lot of stories of losing weight. And I'm like, and what comes after you've lost the weight? Well, I gain it back. Okay, so you know what to do to lose weight and gain it back. Do you know what to do to lose weight and keep it off? And most say, well, I guess no. So then you don't have the solution. That's where you wanna ask for help. If you're stuck in your business, and you get the same result that you don't like three times, you seek help, right? right? You ask for somebody to, you know, teach you something, or you seek another lawyer friend, or you seek, you know, help like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm running up against this problem. What do I do? So we're willing to do it there, but sometimes in our whole, our own health, we aren't because it should just be something like we know how to do, mm -hmm. you know, we should know how to eat. We put the food in our mouth, right? But that's the, that's the hard part there in terms of like, when you're going to seek help, it's, it's, am I worth it? Is my health worth it? And, you know, how long do you want to be a lawyer for still? You know, how long do you want to work for still? And when you're, when you're done working, do you want to have a slew of health problems where now your full-time job is seeing doctors, you know? So that's where you have to ask yourself, you know, what is your health really to you? You know, you imagine this life of when you're done or why you're doing this. I'm sure you're not just doing this to grab paper money and hide it under the bed, right? 
you're doing this because you're, you're, you want to help people. You want to make the money. You want to give your family this great life. You want to travel. Nobody, nobody wants money for the money. They want money for what they can do with it. Right. So it's the same thing. If you want to take that money and then utilize it for something else, could you imagine yourself, you know, having a heart attack doing it or, you know, winding up with some sort of like stress induced disease from it that could have been helped through good nutrition. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to ask yourself, you know, I'm unwilling to ask for help, but if I don't get this help, what will it cost me? Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. And, uh, and you're right. We all need to understand we are definitely worth it. Um, and it is worth it to take care of ourselves. Um, Leslie, this has been fabulous. So uh, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, um, tell, tell us how they can do that. And I know um, you have uh, some type of free call that, that they could access. So tell us about that. Yeah, of course. So I do have a website. It's leslieurbis.com. And that's spelled L-E-S-L-I-E. You are B as in boy, A S as in Sam dot com. So very easy. That's my first and last name. And you can find me on every social platform like that. Uh, but if you go to any of those platforms, you should be able to book what I call a brainstorm call. Um, or if you want to, you know, link it or something, they can, you know, access that. And it's, it's a 35 minute call where we get you clarity. What is it that you need to do? What is your solution? And that's what I want you to have at the end of the call is after that 35 minutes, you know exactly what you need to do to get your result. Terrific. And yes, we will put the link. Uh, we will put the link in the notes so that uh, so it's easy to access. Um, fabulous. That's a, a fabulous offer. And uh, I hope everybody takes advantage of that because uh, uh, clarity is huge. And the opportunity to, to be able to talk to somebody who's an expert in, in the field that you are in um, is really an opportunity people shouldn't pass up. So I encourage everybody to go on uh, click the link and schedule your uh, free call with Leslie. Uh, Leslie, it's been great. I thoroughly enjoyed talking with you. And uh, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And you. Thank you.